The Jay Severin Show. All right, coming up, Ann Curry. We'll deal with her plus Brit's brilliance on the the now out of control, in my estimation, liberal biased press, the Brian Williams press. I want to talk to a, a more credible Brian than Brian Williams now. His name is Brian Buffard. Earned his law degree at Duke University Law School, former Navy JAG officer, served his country. Practices law in Fort Worth, Texas. He's a criminal and military defense counsel who travels the world representing service members facing court martial. Mr. Buffard, welcome to the J7 Show with me, Chris Salcedo. Hey, Chris. Thanks for giving me the, uh, the favorable side of that comparison. <laughs> sure enough. Look, the reason I brought you on today was that there was a, there's a case going on right now out in, um, well, there's two reasons. I want to get an update on Bergdahl and this case going on on South Carolina. In case you folks haven't heard or seen this video of a police officer who has now been charged with murder uh, after alleging that this assailant had taken his taser and that's why he, he shot him, the video reveals something completely different. Uh, Brian, first off, uh, what is your take on what you saw inside of this video? And uh, is this one of those slam dunk cases? Well, first off, I, I would hope that every reasonable person could look at that and agree that that is an absolute abomination and uh, that we all ought to be extremely grateful, not just for the brave person who, who videotaped this, you know, who recorded it, uh, but, but everybody who records interactions with police officers, because if, you'll, if, if you see on the video, uh, you know, he drops his taser there, obviously trying to plant evidence. And in the absence of, a, of an objective video, he would get on the stand, he would testify to that, he would be believed, and he would be acquitted. And uh, in this case, I don't think that he will be, because I, I, I don't know that I've ever seen a video more clear than, than what I've seen here. Uh, folks, it, it clearly shows, and uh, it's, it's one of those things that doesn't translate. The video doesn't translate well into radio. I could play the sounds, the shots fired. Eight rounds fired into this, um, this man's back. As he is running away. Now, the dynamic the press wants to focus in on, white police officer, black uh, individual being shot at. What, for me, the worst part of this is a police officer clearly abusing his authority and power over a citizen of these United States. I could give a damn what color they are. but uh, Yeah, I, I see that. And, 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 you know, the concern is, is that too many of these cases do seem to be white on black. I agree with you. I don't think that that's necessarily... The, the main cause of it, but I, but at the same time, you know, if, if this were a white person, do I think that it would have gone down the same way? Perhaps not. And that's a, that's a terrible indictment of, of society, but I, to me, it bears out in my experience. Right. Well, and, and again, the aforementioned Brian Williams press, uh, the ones to, uh, uh, to uh, blame in my estimation for perverting this issue and making it up because look, the reason I, we, we can't in, if we had had body cameras Let's say, example, in Ferguson, we would have known that the hands up, don't shoot scenario uh, uh, wasn't uh, wasn't real. And we could have saved Darren yeah, well, Wilson's reputation and the and the, and the and the looting and the and the, and all of that and the burning down of buildings. Yeah. But then we well, had one video. Way or another, we'd know. Right. But then we had the video, uh, Eric Garner out of New York, when clearly it seemed to me there was at least sufficient enough question to. To, to at least sufficient enough cause to ask the question, okay, was excessive force used for a man selling cigarettes on the street? Uh, that should have gone to a grand jury. It didn't. In your estimation, Brian, when, when these kinds of things happen, doesn't it kind of lend the, the credence to, the, the, to the, those who are critics out there, the system doesn't work? I, I think that it does, and I, and I think that that's very sad. And, and if, if I had to identify two reasons for it, and, and let me be real clear. I, I have never said, and, and I'm not saying now that, you know, anything like all police are bad or anything like that. I mean, obviously, you know, there are good police officers out there, but there are so many bad ones and they are, they are often not called out by their good peers. And that's a problem. But I think, you know, Chris, I think the bigger problem lies with bad laws. Uh, every criminal law out there needs, before it's enacted, you would hope that intelligent people would look at whatever that conduct is that they want to that they want to outlaw and say, are we willing to put people in cages for violating this law and killing them if they resist? And yes, there are some laws out there that absolutely merit that murder, rape, robbery. But there's a lot of nitnoid stuff that, in my opinion, doesn't. And so we have this guy selling cigarettes. He lost his life. He lost his life for, in my opinion, no reason. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I have said on the record that we needed to have the Eric Garner case go to a grand jury. Uh, I believe that the Ferguson call was the right call because all the evidence pointed the other direction. To me, uh, one is an example of the system working, the other one is not. And in this case, seeing the video, the video evidence uh, that is placed uh, before us with this South Carolina police officer, he would have gotten away with this had it not been the video. So for me, Brian, it makes the case that we need body cameras on, on police officers in this country, not only to, not protect, on- to protect the citizens, but also to protect the vast majority of police officers who are like Darren Wilson, who are just out there doing their duty. Absolutely. And, and I, I don't think that there's a good argument against that. And I think that a good police officer, a, a, a man or a woman of honor and integrity, would welcome having that camera on because, it, like you said, it protects them, it protects the citizens, but nobody has to guess about what happened. And, and you know, we look at this South Carolina case, and just, just imagine how this thing would go if we didn't have that video. And, and I think we all know where it would go. He would get on the stand in his uniform and his shiny badge, and he would testify and he would be believed. Yeah, I got you. Brian Buffard, my guest right now, he's a former Navy JAG officer, practices law in Fort Worth, Texas, travels around the globe helping those facing um, a court-martial defend themselves. So let's talk about the latest on Bo Bergdahl. Uh, th- this, the, the leaks coming out of this case, I find to be fascinating because here we now are, are learning that there are, have been communication intercepts that indicated that before he went uh, off base without authorization – that he was actually seeking out the enemy on several occasions. And there, and, and my, my understanding is, watching some of the reporting out there, that uh, even though nobody's commented from the Army and nobody's commented from Bergdahl's defense, this could be problematic for him, yes? If it's true, yes, I, I, absolutely so. Um, but like you, I'm a, I'm a little bit skeptical about the reports. The, the report, again, seems to come from one person, that being Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer. I've never met the man. I'm not trying to disparage him, but I do know that the last couple of things he said and that was reported all over the news turn, turned out to be, at least if not true, then certainly delayed. Right. Um, Catherine, so Catherine, I, Herridge I actually, Catherine Herridge at Fox News actually did some investigating on this. It was, it okay. was, not, just, it was not just Tony Schaefer. She had actually gotten uh, some, some more concrete evidence of this. Nobody commenting, again, on official channels because of this ongoing investigation. Even the White House right. said, look, we're, we don't want to comment on an ongoing uh, uh, court. Or tri- you know, being a spokesperson, did, Josh Erna said of the commander-in-chief, I don't want to talk about it, but it seems there's credibility for this. Well, yeah, and, and if that's true, and again, I don't have any reason to say that it's not true. Uh, yeah, that that's terrible. That that uh, would would throw the defense into into something of a tailspin. I would imagine it's it's yeah. hard to uh, hard to maintain your innocence and at the same time uh, deal with evidence that shows you were act- actively seeking out the Taliban. I got you, Brian Buffard. He is a Duke University Law School graduate, Navy JAG officer, former Navy JAG officer, served our nation with honor and distinction, unlike Bo Bergdahl, it turns out. <laughs> uh, he, he, he's up in, Fort, up in Fort Worth, Texas. Hey, what's the name of the website where uh, folks can go and check you out? For my military practice, it's jagdefender.com. Jagdefender.com. Brian Buffard, appreciate it.